Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to So What Now? As many of you have noticed, we went dark this week in solidarity with Black Lives Matter. It's been a very challenging time for all of us, but it's more important now than ever that we show up for each other, that we take action, and that we create waves in this time of change. Anything you do, whether that's peaceful protests, calling your local reps, signing a petition, or even just starting a conversation, goes a very long way. To honor this space for this movement, we actually decided to push our final episode with musician Jane Louie to next Saturday, June 13th. But don't worry, we still have something prepared for you today. Uh, we understand that the world needs some respite, for, especially for what's going on in this last week. Because we still need laughter and we still need a break from everything that's happening. So we're going to be playing something for you uh, that no one has ever seen called the our rehearsal, rehearsal episode. episode. This episode was a tech run through that featured our really good friend James Tang. Uh, it was very much an honest uh, behind the scenes look of what it looked like to put together the show, figure out its formatting, figure out the technical difficulties um, of like a live stream show. The mistakes, blunders, we hide nothing. It is all out there. So yeah, this could be incredibly embarrassing and incredibly eye-opening, or both, but we feel like this episode would be pretty much enjoyable because we enjoyed it while filming it. And James has this incredible meditation workshop within this episode, which we feel like is much needed, especially during this time. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the rehearsal episode of So What Now with our special guest, James Tang. And we'll see you next Saturday on June 13th, 2 p.m. Pacific time with special guest Jane Louie. Take care and stay safe. And we love you. You got this. I'm Let's like, do it. it. It's a train wreck, but that's sort of our brand. <laughs> and like, we're learning from this. Yeah. And we love James because he's willing to be part of Thank this you, train James. wreck. We love you. With There's us. It's only up, guys. That's the only direction to go. You start as a train. <laughs> right. I mean, like, and how now much it is six. All right, here we go. <clears throat> oh wait, if she's mute, do we hear the audio? <laughs> I don't hear it. <laughs> we don't hear it anymore, Jack. Well, so you don't hear it when I'm muted. Yeah. <laughs> mm -mm, I don't hear it. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll she, just not repeat it. It's fine. I just want to talk. Yeah. She just won't <laughs> cool. talk. Sounds okay. good. Here we go. So Hello, everyone. Time to put your pants on, and ladies and gentlemen, and non-binary folk, or not, because, you know, we're on Zoom, because it is time for So What Now. That was the best intro ever, not really, Thank but you. it is the one and only <laughs> virtual show, this right here, to get your creative fix as our world is slowly but surely falling apart. I was nervous, Rox. That yeah, extremely whatever. loud person over there is Roxy She. Hello there, and that 12-year-old face belongs to Mr. Anthony Ma. I'm a dad now, so it's not as 12 anymore. I would say it's around, you know, so 24 sensitive. years oh my of God. age. Okay. Yeah, oh my I God. I'm, I'm yeah, but you also have those gray hairs growing out, so you're kind of like a real-life Asian Benjamin Button. Is that what you're going for? You said I was sensitive, but I am even more sensitive when you touch on the topic of my gray hairs, especially Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, James, he's such a pussy. Go ahead, take a dig at him. Um, this makes me uncomfortable. Oh, no, it's fine. It's totally fine. You just go See, ahead Rox, and do it. Just you're just go ahead. already making just go ahead and do the it. guests no, 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 you uncomfortable. You gotta, 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 you gotta, right. you gotta, 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 you that, okay, yeah, says the actor, pff, whatever. You're dead to me. Anyways, today we're joined by the amazingly handsome James Hang. Say hi, James. Hi, James. <laughs> He's an international actor, writer, and filmmaker, like literally a jack of all trades. Yes, and you can see that handsome face over there, not only on this screen, but also on Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Bosch. Say, say that again. Bosch. Wait, I don't, James, I've how do you never say it? said we're, this word in my life. How do you say it? it? We're butchering it. 
You know, they never gave me a pronunciation guide on set. <laughs> <laughs> what a great production, Bokshka. <laughs> so we'll you can call also it see him on <laughs> Borsch. Sorry. It's Borsch. The, you okay. can see him on uh, NCIS LA. And also, one of my faves, you got to keep your eyes open, but you'll see him. He's on The Mandalorian. <gasps> mm, right? Yeah. Right, Let's take Rox? a look. Let's take a look at his stuff. I'm worried. I'm worried. <laughs> Don't be worried, James. This is just your stuff. Okay. This is your stuff. We're gonna see your stuff. Thank you, producer Jack. We love you, Jack. <sighs> oh, oh my God. What are you saying? What is that? Vampire Slayer's manual. Oh, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I thought we'd come here to talk about Kamai Girl. My people. He says none of this is useful. I'm sorry, you're breaking up. The signal dropping. Well, it's moments like this that make the hard days and long nights at least a bit bearable. Sexy! So suave, Damn. Man. So suave. That's super hot. Okay, so, um, anyways, as you can see, that was like a little snippet of what James can do, but he's only just getting started. But first, mm -hmm. we're going to let 12 um, year old douchebag here introduce our first segment. 12 year old douchebag, take it away. Thanks, big boob loudmouth. Uh, <laughs> okay, so our first segment, since, you know, the world is going to hell right now, if you haven't noticed, with bad news around every corner, we wanted to open up with something a little more positive. So this segment is called News That Makes Us Go, Ah. ah. <laughs> Hit it. Title bumper. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Get it. Yeah! News yeah. that makes us go, ah. Oh. I think, uh, I don't know if it's a Wi Fi thing. Ah. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Ah. Okay, That's yeah, great. no, this is great. This is fucking perfect. So, okay. Um, okay, so James, the point to this and, and our viewers, whoever's watching right now, point to this is Roxy and I will present a topical feel good news story to James and James will have to be the judge of which news story touches his heart the most and makes him go, ah. Yes, longest. because obviously I'm going to win. So what's going to happen now is we will both present our stories, whichever one is better. He will all the longest too. James, do you understand that? Yeah. Okay, great. So who will go first? <laughs> Anthony, rock, paper, scissors, shall we do it? Okay, let's okay. do it, okay? Dental 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 okay, you go. Scissors, I, mean, right? I was going to win anyway. I'm, I'm, I was going to win. Sure. Okay, so my first one is this article. I read this um, earlier today and I thought it was incredibly amazing. This longtime Chinatown grocer is feeding the homeless and elderly amid the pandemic. This is happening in Chinatown um, in New York City. And what I really love about this story is that he compares what he's doing to the frontline workers in the hospitals. So he's like, wow. I want to be able to do as much as they are. So he's doing as much in his community with what he can and feels like this is the best way that he could be contributing even more, if not, you know, be, I know yeah. everyone's saying, saying like, oh, stay home and be your, a hero and just stay where you are. But for me, I felt like this was extremely touching because he's going above and beyond, you know, like just his own community, but going to those who are severely in need and risking his own health to make sure that people have food, you know, which mm -hmm. is like, now I think people have a tough time paying rent you know so yeah, this was extremely moving for me so this is probably my my favorite story um it's gonna be a hard one to beat okay your turn anthony that is yeah you know what that's a hard one to beat but i'm gonna give you your run for your money here okay <gasps> so my positive news james and rocks is of a new jersey resident with autism by the name of eddie lynn so he's a balloon artist so he's been making balloon art for essential workers. So he's been creating balloon pieces for grocery store workers, postal mail carriers, other essential workers, just as a, you know, a token of their, uh, uh, of his appreciation for them. So uh, for example, he's created a balloon grocery shopping cart for his close friend's mom, who is a manager at a local supermarket, right? Wow. And uh, another one is of a, a, he recently made a balloon mailman and a mail truck replica. I, how do you even do that with balloons, right? And a, a, after a person reached out wanting to order like a special gift for her dad, who is a mail carrier. So 
yeah, people are feeding other, uh, yeah, it's just like feeding people, but also people are bringing, bringing positivity in other ways into people's lives. So Eddie's great. He's now 22. He started making balloon art at the age of 10 while watching YouTube tutorials. And his mother, Jenny, is his partner in the side business called Awesome Balloon Creator, where he creates balloon arts for conventions, parties, and events. But um, he, this is, this is probably something that's going to make you go, ah, both of you. He calls his mother his balloon whisperer. <laughs> oh, I'll just give you that. That yeah. is really sweet. And it, it looks, he looks extremely talented, Anthony. He's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You, so anyone. James, are you ready to awe to your options? Uh, <laughs> I, I guess I am. <laughs> All right. Well, it'll be first the neighborhood hero of um, Asian American grocer in Chinatown, New York City. Oh. Okay, that one's good. That's a good one. Or. Or. The Eddie Lin, who is the balloon artist, who is just giving balloons and magical positivity into his community. Oh, is that a tie? I feel like that's a fucking tie. That's a tie. And wait, is that a tie? Wait, wait, James, seriously, is that a tie? Which one do you like more? I couldn't tell yeah. because I can't. I, I can't. I can't choose the honest. Was the okay, great- whatever. Okay, so basically I still win. Okay, that was stupid. Up next, something more oh, fun God. and relevant to what we're actually talking about, which is our uh, piece de resistance, um, our mm-hmm. main event here, Mr. James Tang. So what now Woo. presents, we're gonna be playing a little bit icebreaker game with you, James. It's gonna be called Social Media, Media Stalker. Stalker. Oh boy, oh boy. Title bumper. <laughs> Hit it, Jack. <laughs> I love this. You're like Sherlock and I'm like Watson. Yeah, you know, dude, I look good with that pipe, though. I'm saying. I feel like Sherlock also magnifying. <laughs> okay, cool. So this is the photo I chose, James. And then I oh, saw... Oh, before, before that, we want to uh, we want to oh. uh, explain what's going on oh, here yeah, with social want... media stalker. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, Roxy and I have scoured James's uh, uh, Twitter, Instagram, social media, what y- you know, and found two random pictures to have him elaborate on. So it's pretty simple. Okay, pretty... so Anthony, I get to go first again because I'm older. Okay, seniority. Go, go right ahead. Okay, so this is mine. So, uh, mm. and it's kind of interesting because I saw this and I love blood, you know, like I love gory horror, like anything like that. And like seeing handsome James Ooh. doused in blood, it just tickles me in, in a certain way and I can't really <laughs> explain it. Mm. Um, so, and then I saw that uh, Jack put up a trailer where he was doused in blood again and see. <laughs> Well, not, well, let's not go on to that photo just yet. Okay. <laughs> um, doused in blood. And I just really want to know, what's the context of this, James? Mm-hmm. Um, well, it was a first date, and then... Um... <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> was it? That's a date for Roxy, man. Yeah, no, <laughs> I'm just... into it. <laughs> Actually, part of, partly a joke, but also not a joke. Um, this is... Uh, that was a clip. The clip was from a short film. This is a behind the scenes shot from a short film that I made um, called Batfished, which is available on YouTube. Wow. Um, call about the gist of it is what if vampires found their victims through dating apps? And so. Is this the, speaking from personal experiences? Maybe a little, maybe, maybe some inspiration from oh. uh, going on dates on dating apps. Oh. Maybe. <laughs> what if James is actually not alive? Like this is just he is a zombie. This is Roxy just going a little into her imagination again. It's good. It goes it goes on. It's great though. But <laughs> I would have to say, Batfished, I've watched it myself twice already, three times later on too. I love it. There's this one scene, you've probably seen a clip of it already. We already saw that clip, but it's just a bunch of blood that just spills continually spilling on on James and it's, it should be the most disturbing thing but the most hilarious thing as well so how, Rox, how long, I'm sure you'll how, love it how long did you have to wash yourself to get all of that off yeah <laughs> not, not long honestly um Damn yeah it. The, the makeup artists and the special effects people the blood they used was very they also avoided corn syrup so it didn't get like too sticky like, it was still but it was it was like not the corn syrup sticky so they like created like a a formula that made it pretty easy to wash out honestly 
Well, uh, honey, you look great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so that was mine. <laughs> okay, yeah, That's a good one. Try. That's a yeah, great one. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> You have some explaining to do on this next one here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> who's that beautiful lady in red? I love it. I really do. So uh, when I when I found this, it was either between a, a a picture of you with very less clothing or in this clothing. So I wanted to, yeah, just want want you to elaborate on it. You know, so Can you explain what this lady in red is about. Um, unfortunately, I actually don't have a really good picture with all the makeup on after because that was actually gorgeous. Um, <gasps> good job. I don't yeah. doubt that at all. Here, I could send you guys separately in like a private chat Please later. Do. Love Please it. Do. Can't wait. Oh. Wait, what's her name? <laughs> I never came up with a name, but I did go Aww. to drag. Yeah, we didn't. I think the the total time was uh, between like this show and the rehearsals all coming together i think we've spent like maybe maybe a week to 10 days total so like was it was the just show about a quick thing um so it was like it was a part of the um oh no it wasn't it was a self-funded um kind of live musical thing piece that someone just the writer and director kind of just created and wanted to kind of make into a bigger project so it's kind of like a test run um and it was kind of like, um, ah, what's the, the, the Scrooge, Ebenezer Scrooge, uh, Christmas Story. Christmas Carol. Christmas Carol with drag queens. Yes! <laughs> James, did you know? Awesome. I mean, I think Anthony knows this because we've been friends for so long, Anthony, that if mm -hmm. I weren't a filmmaker, my dream is to be a drag queen. Ooh. And my, my alter ego, her name is Ava Cado. Like avocado, but it's like ava and cado is en français because cado means gift in French. Oui, 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 oui. So, anyways, I just feel like a kindred bond with this photo of you. I feel like I just like you more and more. There's so many layers to peel off in more ways than one. <laughs> this show is not <laughs> kid friendly. <laughs> just kidding. Okay. You know, my own. What? <laughs> My, my uh, wife got jealous as I was scrolling through these uh these these, these photos and I, and then she was like who's that who is that you're looking at and I was like it's James honey and then she Don't got even worry. more jealous she got even more jealous look at those triceps <laughs> anyway so thank you James for giving us insight into both of those two photos obviously me and Anthony picked very different ones but now we mm -hmm. are going to transition into our interview portion where we really want to get to learn more about you so as we've been saying James is very very accomplished he's a multi-hyphenate he films he, he's a filmmaker he writes he he is he's an actor and now um What's even crazier is that like you've lived in Canada, Thailand, and Australia. So James, what was that experience like? Um, I mean, in short, I'm a little biased, but it was pretty awesome. Um, <laughs> <laughs> lucky, very lucky to have been able to do that. Um, but yeah, I went to international school growing up in Thailand. Um, go Panthers, ISP. Uh, about 30 minutes outside of Bangkok and yeah that was like the formative experience of my life but I feel like it was um, yeah something I you know never trade for anything else because yeah international school was amazing it kind of taught me how to like interact with people from all different cultures and like all different types of people and just judge people for like who they are as people and not let like superficial things get in the way of that um and canada australia <clears throat> where i went to for um uh university and so that was just kind of yeah the fact that i got to go to multiple countries and kind of experience different cultures each and just to help give me a better grasp of you know how humans all around the world live um i feel like those are experiences that i really cherish and i feel like are really important and i feel like if i could somehow bring that to other people um maybe that could help people feel more comfortable with other cultures and other ethnicities or whatever, you know? 
So how does that apply in terms of like your acting? Like when you read a character, like do you find it hard to sort of resonate with someone that you're not familiar with or like a character that feels very foreign to you? Like how does your experience allow you to connect with that or make it your own with that kind of perspective? Yeah, I feel like it helps, you know, it helps create so many different people to like draw from if I need to do that. Um, but also it helps me kind of, yeah, be able to relate to certain characters or a lot more characters experiences um, more easily without, you know, necessarily judging it or anything um, as well as, yeah, just being able to like, okay, I get what they're going through because I've like either known someone or met someone that's been through something similar, something like that. So I know you, you started acting very early on uh, in middle school, I believe high school. Uh, high school was probably my first main middle school. There was a middle school play too. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> middle school. Yeah. What I found interesting that you've told me before, you know, you said you started your professional acting career in Thailand mm -hmm. in a film called what is this here? Trade of Innocence. Yeah. Playing a police translator. We saw a clip <laughs> of that actually with uh, Dermot Maroney. Is what? That Did I say his name right? Say Dermot it again. Maroney. The, right. the dude from New Girl, Dermot Maroney. <laughs> I got it right. I said it right. Okay. You, see, you so, said Dermot Macaroni the other time. <laughs> I, I was hungry. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, how did that experience help you catapult into a career here, say in America, an acting career here? Right. I feel like that was really like one of the first doors that opened mentally for me in that it's like I booked like a job on a Hollywood film essentially. And it was like, it was like, I could do this. And other people think I could do this. Okay, okay, like maybe this is something that I maybe can do more in the future or continuing on or something, you know? Like I was acting opposite Dermot Moroni technically. Um, yeah. I had not seen my best friend's wedding, which is like what he's known for. I guess so like people had mentioned because I'd saw the name and I was like, I actually don't really know who this guy is, but then you know, doing the research and stuff and say, Oh, oh, okay, oh cool, yeah. That's someone like that people my family has like watched their movies and stuff. So yeah, it was cool to just to have that kind of like permission given by the universe and for me to like be able to be like, Oh, this is a possibility. Can I ask you a question just because I feel like <clears throat> uh everybody watching this would have some sort of experience with this but what it was for you like did you encounter any challenges like Anthony said that you started acting like in middle school like were there any obstacles for you in sort of visualizing this career path for yourself especially since you were moving around so much like uh yes very much so and I'd say the main obstacles are for myself because like the middle school you know that was like I wanted to do a play and get involved with friends and stuff. And so I got like, um, like a small singing part in a musical. And then I ended up doing, getting a small part in like a play, I'd say probably another two years later or something in high school. But all those times it was kind of just like, ah, you know, I got to play around with it, but it was never something I could really do. It was all these kind of bookings over, over all the years, all the years, you know, like, Going to going off to college and then coming back to Thailand and then doing this, getting into acting like more properly and getting kind of more gigs. It's you know it's been like a twenty year process for me to like finally get to the point where like I can give myself permission to really like pursue this and see that I can do all right with it. That's beautiful. <clears throat> yeah, but okay, so that's really wonderful. So it's like, you know, I think we all just sort of struggle with that. Like, are we good enough? Like the competition and that entire aspect, but sort of leading into our conversation now, especially with the current pandemic that we're in, we're all currently stuck in quarantine, right? So what are you doing right now in quarantine? How are you staying creative? Um, do you feel like this time is of hindrance to you or is it of benefit to you? Um, I feel pretty um, blessed hashtag blessed, um, but the honestly blessed that like, it has been um, a benefit to me because um, I mean, I'm lucky enough that I'm with family and none of us are, you know, affected 
physically by the virus, like literally by the virus, we're all healthy and safe, which I think is I'm so blessed by and so grateful for. And so that also frees me up to have the time to um, to focus on creative things or like do things within the creative realm that I normally wouldn't have given myself time for or like worked into my schedule before. Um, even now having like an open schedule and making sure that I have the discipline to like follow a schedule and then fit everything in and kind of feel busy while doing that. Like, I feel really like, yeah, it actually honestly has been kind of beneficial for me. What kind of, uh, what kind, uh, kind of stuff have you filled your schedule with? Um, funnily enough, like this weird, I think just, you know, being Asian, Asian American, the whole, like, we always gotta be working. We always gotta be productive. Mm -hmm. Just watching movies and TV shows. Sometimes I have this weird cognitive dissonance where I'm just like, Oh, but this is, fun i shouldn't be doing this i should be doing work stuff and so in the past i would like kind of brush it away but now it's just like oh no i actually have to schedule this in and force myself to actually like watch movies and tv because not only is it fun but it's also actually work um so actually forcing myself to do that um being able to come back and take a big picture step and be like where do i want to be creatively and so that leads me to do create projects with like anthony for example um we're gonna try to make a action comedy situation going on soon. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so yeah. have you, have you like, like learned anything new or like discovered something new about yourself during this time? Any breakthroughs? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, being holed up with family as well is like just being able to explore each other's relationships. And, you know, sometimes when you see, sometimes, especially as adults, when we see family, it's just like, when you go over for dinner, catch up and say, Oh, how you been? What's been up? Cool. Okay. Bye leave so now like being quarantined together we get to kind of live through all the, the ups and downs of each other's personalities and habits and stuff and so yeah like learning you know about patience about exploring other people and family members and like how how they operate and how i operate and whether that can clash or doesn't clash or how we can synergize and, stuff and just yeah just people skills and stuff it really does feel like this entire quarantine is testing us to be mm -hmm. our best, yeah. you know, like in, in a closed space and isolation, your thoughts, what you can't control, what you can control. By the way, just a little sneak peek. Um, James is going to be leading like a really cool, like meditation, like mental work exercise for all of us um, in a little bit later on in today's episode. But I just thought that was kind of interesting to just sort of explore that, like we're sort of all experiencing the same things. Like, and, and Anthony, your mm -hmm. button makes you look like Jack-Jack. Like like. <laughs> like my son, but my son's in the front and mine's in the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah thank you for sharing mean, with us. Yeah, like I, it's gotten me definitely closer with my family. And I've, from, from what I've heard from you, James, you have been working out and helping your mom and your aunt work out as well, which probably gotten you guys like even closer. I'm sure you guys have never done that before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, so it really does sound like you are the action comedian, a next Asian star that we are, you're training yourself to be that, you know, I mean, you're fit, you're charming. You should have your shirt off more often, you know, yeah, yeah, totally. And Jay, oh yeah. my God, he's gonna do it. He's gonna do it. He's gonna do it. No, he's, he's, not gonna do it. he's not gonna do it. Oh, we sorry. need. We need. We need to, a jolt of excitement. Also, I haven't. Right I haven't been so. with other people for like two months. <laughs> Just been with my dog. It's been hard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, after after all this, right? After all these experiences, what do you think has like um has has any of this changed your view of the future of? uh after quarantine are you still going to be the next action comedy star or has it like propelled you in a different way um i'd love to do i'd love to do action comedy my goodness yeah um honestly i feel like the quarantine is what has shifted me more towards that and opened myself up more towards that action comedy um realm because i feel like it's like what i've always wanted to do growing up but I feel like there's just weird things along the way where I'm just like, oh, I'm not going to learn martial arts because that's a stereotype. So I'm going to shift away from that. But then eventually I, I did start learning some because I was like, oh, this is fun. And I feel like I could do okay with it. Um, I mean, we both grew up watching Jackie Chan and we loved it. And, <laughs> and sort of avoiding that because of how America views us. Uh, yeah, but America 
we love that stuff right well, we're built so, on the foundation of martial arts movies okay like my dream is to make a wuxia or wushu type film a hundred percent it's in our blood right yeah. we can evolve the genre you know exactly a hundred thousand percent a hundred you'll be the taller jackie chan <laughs> wait so james, similar nose similar nose one last question <laughs> one last question for you james so what do you think any predictions on um how you think the our industry will be different after this is over man i i don't even know because i know they're talking about like hey let's reopen with 10 person film sets you know so it's like maybe we're all just gonna maybe people will be more used to seeing you know like smartphone videos as like the norm instead of it being like you know well-made photography or something but, zoom talk shows <laughs> yeah, yeah hell yeah you know zoom talk shows because yeah i feel like everything i feel like you know everything was moving towards digital so much more before and now i feel like it's just like steroid injection in the butt like there's gonna be so <laughs> digital digital content that's gonna people are gonna be okay with mm -hmm. so yeah that's that's the only i think i could say honestly about it because i don't even know like because i mean there's so many people that still need to be employed you know and but until we can find a way to safely all work together it's gonna be a it's gonna be a strange strange environment yeah for sure Thank you so much, James. All right, everybody. So we'll be back in a couple of moments to do an intimate creative workshop with James after a word from our sponsors. And so this week, our show is sponsored by Videomate. Uh, let's see, their tagline is feeling lonely. Find your soulmate through the magic of video today. So here it is. Sorry. <laughs> Where's that voice coming? Get it, Jack. <laughs> Are you looking for me? I'm looking for someone. Where can you be? Someone. Uh, hello. My name is Barry. Last name Chang. Uh, my mother knew I was coming on to this program today, so she aggressively asked me to put on my best fun shirt. So, this is it. As you can see, there is an assortment of diverse coconuts on my chest. Hi, my name is Marley Indigo. Um, in my previous life, um, before this iteration of myself, of my soul transformation, I was Sharon Kim. Um, I was, uh, but let's not talk about her right now. And I am looking for my twin flame during quarantine because all of this self-isolation has really allowed me to meditate and really bring in my vibration to call in my other half. And so I feel... I guess my perfect date would possibly be uh, <clears throat> long walks in my apartment from one corner of the kitchen to another corner of my living room while conversating about the history of agriculture from the 1800s to modern day. Are you looking for me? Well, any date would be me going in dreams and astral projecting into your mind at night. And maybe there we could be together because in quarantine, we're all alone. Uh, sexy is a very foreign word to me. I don't understand it. I find sexy is, uh, and a man is a penis because I love everything else. That's what defines a man is a penis, right? And then like for a woman, it would be a vagina, but I just love everything. I find everything sexy and I hope that you find everything sexy too, if you know what I mean. Oh God, oh God, huh. I'm winking, I'm winking at you. <laughs> Oh, that word again. Well, if you mean by sexy, meaning fun fact, I can tell you a fun fact about myself. Uh, when I get excited, especially when I listen to operatic music, 
the webbings in between my toes begin to expand at an enormous rate. My mother called it duck feet. Are you looking for me? So what's sexy about me? My soul, my spirit. Everything else just doesn't really matter. I guess I could relate closest to a hamster because they are known to bite off their hands when they get nervous. I'm known to bite my nails. So there's some kind of similarity there. This is a portrait of my father um, in my past life. Uh, I was a lion in a past life, a lioness, and this was my father. I connected very deeply with him. So I think in essence, my spirit is still of a lion. Mm. Mm. <laughs> um, okay, so make sure to check Video Mate for all of your remote dating needs. Remember to incorporate discount code SWN, so what now, for 50% off your first month of membership. First month of membership usually is $99.99, so 50% off is whatever 50% off is of that. So good luck out there, guys. And now, <clears throat> the moment that we've all been waiting for, the workshop portion of our show. Bumper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah look at that sexy photo it's like one of those doorbells at in arcadia and asian food uh homes asian, <laughs> asian <laughs> homes <laughs> yeah. so james take it away all right thank you so much y'all um so this comes from a part of a talk that John Cleese gives about creativity. Um, it's on the internet. You can just, if you Google, um, what's it called? John Cleese creativity lecture. Um, he talks about uh, kind of creating like a safe space for your creativity. Um, one of those being like an oasis, a physical and mental emotional oasis. Um, so if you haven't already, please get yourself into a place that is quiet um, and away from distractions. I feel like most of us are anyway because you're the only one that's distracting james <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> sorry so yeah so, so this i guess would be like the james tang mindfulness toolbox of random tricks um that we can try out and i can talk about that have worked for me in the past in creating yeah like a sort of calm safe physical and mental place. Uh, so to begin with, we can start with some box breathing. It's called that because a box has four equal sides. And so you breathe in for two seconds, breathe, hold it for two seconds, breathe out for two seconds, and then hold it for two seconds. Um, one note is when you breathe in, make sure you keep your shoulders level and let the air go down towards your feet so that that's a full like diaphragm breath rather than like shallow up and down breaths. So let's just do a few box breaths. Um, breathe in, two, hold, two, breathe out, two, hold, two. One more time, breathe in, two, hold, two, breathe out, two, hold, two. One more time, breathe in, two, hold, two, breathe out, two, hold, two. Um, slow calming breathing helps kind of bring our heart rate down and creates like a physiological response so that it kind of helps us um, calm down overall. And so this next exercise, I don't really have a name for it. It's, you can call it like the okay meditation or the okay mindfulness exercise. But essentially it's just saying a neutral okay to any stray thought that comes in our mind. Because I think we're, you know, we're in a time that we are stuck with our own thoughts and not everyone has been able to be okay with that. <clears throat> and so, um, yeah, once you have your quite a quiet space and all that's left are your thoughts, sometimes they can be a little intrusive, right? And some of these thoughts may actually be valid, but we don't need to have addressed them right now. A lot of times they're out of our control. So for example, 
if you're sitting there and you're just, you know, doing the, doing the box breathing throughout as well. And the thought comes in like, Oh my God, what if the, this is, what if this is life, you know, for the rest of the time, it's never going to end. We're stuck in quarantine forever. Okay. And you could use my voice if that helps. Um, but also your own voice and you want to keep it neutral. You don't want positive or negative. It's just about kind of neutralizing the thought by accepting it. So something else, you know, being Asian and Asian American this time, like what if I go outside and someone attacks me? Okay. Right. Like I mentioned earlier, that is a valid fear and a valid problem that we have. But right now in the moment that you're trying to take to create the safe space for yourself, it's not something we need to worry about. So just accepting that this thought has come in and then letting it go. You know, other random intrusive thoughts, you know, will they ever make a good will hunting too? Okay. We don't need to address that right now. Right. Um, so hopefully that kind of gives an example of the things that we're kind of going through, you know, what, you know, what if I never create something artistic again? Okay. What if it rains tomorrow? Okay. What if I run out of food? Okay. Um, it kind of helps just for me, at least it helps, you know, once you just accept that thought, you just let it settle, just let it go and let it settle. Um, another exercise that if that doesn't work for you, or if you want to add on top of that for me is a sort of, um, what's it called? It's, it's like brute force meditation. Um, and I feel like it does kind of require, it can require discipline, but it's also just like a huge, like just sit ups for your brain in terms of discipline. Um, for me, it's basically just counting to 10. Um, and the issue, the, the trick, the caveat is as you count to 10 in your mind, well, box breathing, anytime a stray thought comes in your mind, you reset and you have, you focus on clearing your mind. So same thing, but rather than the okay, so you, you're sitting there, you're breathing, you start counting, one, two, I forgot to feed my dog today, back to one, one, two, my butt itches, one, two, three, four, it's kind of hot, one, two, and so on and so forth. Um, that's another method I, I found that works for me. Um, it does take, definitely takes a lot more concentration um, and focus than the previous method. So that one I'd say, yeah, like just, you know, mark like 10 to 15 minutes to just really get really um, intense about just the discipline of that. But I do feel like over time, if you just keep doing it, um, that kind of helps create, build the muscles of just mindfulness calmness um bringing peace within your 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 emotional and mental well-being and state so that that gives kind of like the fertile ground for creativity to spring forth um how much time do i have i'd like one more thing i just can't remember it so i have to check my notes guys please please go ahead, go ahead, okay. go ahead. one second i feel so zen right now i feel great wait I anthony let's try to anymore. count to 10 let's try to count to 10 yeah. without thinking of anything okay Oh, are you counting out loud or? I'm, I'm, I don't, I mean, I, oh, he's back. <laughs> <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, nine. So this is one final tool, toolbox for today, at least, um, that I found works for me is, um, is our self-talk. So our, you know, just the kind of mental voice we have in our minds talking about stuff. Yeah, with it, whether it comes to creativity and, you know, our, our acting or our writing or our directing or producing or whatever, that can be kind of self-defeating sometimes, depending on how you speak to yourself. Um, and one kind of trick that I like to use is to use, to visualize the, like, ideal version of myself five years from now. Like, if I make every right choice or, you know, basically the ideal version of yourself. Yeah, every right choice for me would probably be different for someone else, for you. So what that person would be like speaking to yourself in your mind. So for me, that kind of leads to someone that's, you know, calm, confident, but also like caring, is coaching, 
you know, a lot of people like beat themselves up over things for even the smallest mistakes. Um, and that can be motivational, I feel, in the short term, but over the long term, that could really have an effect on our own you know, self esteem and just mental well being. So I feel like being able to be, to, to create some, at least an environment in your own mind too that can foster growth as well, so that you're not kind of hurting yourself as you do it, I feel like is also something that's really important and something that's worked for me as well. So yeah. That's amazing, James. Thank you so that's much. Amazing. Um, so how long have you been incorporating these practices? Uh, has it been something that you've been doing for a while now or recently that you discovered? I feel like I've learned about these and have been doing them for probably 10 years, just on and off. It's one of those things where like I do them enough and then I kind of, I feel like, cool, I'm good. And then I, I might get slipped into a place of like, just not feeling so hot or like, yeah, letting like anxiety and like negative thoughts come in and then. I'll have to rediscover them and be like, what is something I could do? Oh yeah, that's right. I do the okay meditation or just try to meditate and just take like 10 to 15 minutes and try to just brute force my way through any negative thoughts. Um, but yeah, it's just something I've been just doing on and off for like probably, yeah, about 10 years or so now. Wow. That's incredible. Wow. Amazing. And how do you feel? You I'm feel good? I am so calm now and so zen. Like I was. <laughs> I could literally uh, listen to James talk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so Anthony. Anyways, are you ready for final thoughts? I am so ready. I I want to I want to say a couple of things, but I before can't wait that, to say my things. Let's hit that bumper. <laughs> <laughs> Rox, you can start. Um, you know, I, I, um, I, I've been reflecting a lot about like, you know, how James chose to do a sort of meditation and three different techniques to just sort of help us work through our own negative self-talk. And it's interesting because in Asian American culture, we, growing up, I think this has always been something that was frowned upon or not openly discussed about, you know, it's like, you do something to achieve it, but there isn't any way that we could have learned how to deal with talking to ourselves or being able to be like, this is not within my control, right? Like what James was talking about in terms of, oh, being Asian, it's like having to be productive all the time. But this pandemic was not in our control, you know? So his okay meditation really taught me to, to like relinquish control of things that I can't predict that can happen in the future or, or things that have happened in the past. Like all we know is our present, right? And that we have to accept it, whatever it, it deals us. So I think that was probably the most effective thing I learned. What about you, Anthony? Uh, just to elaborate what you just said, Rox, I, I, it just reminded me of just uh, as artists, we are constantly distracted by social media posts, comparis comparing ourselves, negative thoughts, uh bad news everything so it's just all these thoughts are just wrapped around in our head we're always constantly distracted but what james has taught us today is that we can always reset always you know even if it's like what right now we can reset and the second after that we can reset and we can do that right now too right now after this sentence so it is always an opera there's always an opportunity to change your perspective to change your thoughts you know and and I think your mind can really be the most powerful, powerful thing. If you, if you boggle down your, your mind with just a bunch of negative thoughts, then of course you will, you, you will have to have some more power to, you know, um, reset those things. And then you, we all do have that kind of power in us because I haven't meditated in forever, but thanks to James today, I got back to that mode and I actually did feel sort of, I wasn't lying. I did feel very calm and very Zen. Like it's been a, I pay for headspace in it. I haven't even, <laughs> I haven't even like, like opened that app in like five months. So yeah, thank you, James. That was great. It was very refreshing. Yeah, cause our show is all about, <clears throat> you know, I think how creatives can unblock that and all of that fear-based anxiety about what we can't control right now is sort of the cloud above all of that. So James, you know, uh, before we close out the show, do you have any final thoughts? Um, I mean, I honestly don't think this will last forever. So we just gotta hang in there, 
you know, keep doing the good thing. And even if we're not productive that one day, you know, that's not the end of the world and it's not your fault. Um, we're all dealing with some just, you know, a kind of worldwide pandemic right now, you know? So I think just focus on the goal, but don't beat yourself up if you're not reaching that goal, like immediately on the first day. Hell yeah. Thank you, James. Well, hey, that is it for now. That was our very first show. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, James, for, for, for being a part of this. Make right. sure to follow us on Facebook at So What Now Show and now on Instagram, So What Now underscore show. This is Big Titties Loudmouth <laughs> signing off. Okay, fine. And this is gray nostril haired 12 year old baby face Asian Benjamin Button <laughs> waving goodbye to you. All right, James, let's all wave goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you, everybody. Thanks Love you all. Watching. Goodbye. Yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs> Let's just keep dancing <laughs> until something happens. <laughs> so